obviously ten signings already. Have, have you got any more close to close to being completed? Uh, not close, but we we certainly still looking. Um, I think we had uh, obviously an initial sort of run of signings, and then it went quiet, and we got a couple more in. Um, and at the minute, I just feel a little bit as though we kind of just starting to get drip fed a, a few more names, different names, as opposed to before when you you know you, there was a pool of players out there. Obviously, some are signing up, some are maybe trialing, and and then things might not go the way that the players would want. Um, so that's where I feel we're at, you know, before or alongside perhaps the the loan market where some clubs have, have clearly got either you know players that aren't just in the plans or the younger players that they wanted to go and gain experience. So they're the sort of I think two areas that you, we kind of look in currently. Um, but in fairness, it doesn't seem. I'm sure, there are a hell of a lot of players out there that are still waiting to be fixed up, but doesn't quite feel that way uh, in terms of what's been, certainly been put to us uh, from that point of view. But you know, we remain patient. We have got at least the majority of the squad in place, which is is positive, as you say, with the ten new signings. So you know, there'll be no sort of panic or rush. We just got to uh, work with those players, get them um, together, get a good team spirit going. A bit of obviously tactical work, um, not too heavy so far, but we've I've done quite a few 11 v 11s, and and looking forward to the first game on on Saturday. And what positions are you still looking to add to? Uh, I think we're still looking at a goalkeeper. Um, you know we've got James and, and Ollie, and you know so from the start. The, the plan realistically for Ollie is to be able to go out and get some games, uh, to gain some experience. I have to say he's come back and, and looked good. He certainly looks like he's he's grown a little bit more. Uh, I think that's a comment everyone's made. And he, he's done well in training, so you know that's credit to him. But I don't think that should probably deviate away from the plan, albeit you know if, if we can't find someone suitable, then, then Ollie will, will fill the number two position. Um, at the other end of the pitch is, is an obvious position to strengthen as a, as a centre forward, with only having Ryan Taylor and, and Linnell John Lewis as two uh, out and out strikers. Probably got a couple of players that can sort of fill that gap if we were really needed, but it's certainly like a, a, another one uh, that's a proven striker. And then a couple of other areas I think we're a little bit more open on. Uh, but probably would still like to bring a couple more players in on top of that. You've obviously got that bit of leeway in the National League where you can make loans throughout the season. Does yeah. that give you does that relieve a bit of pressure if, if you weren't able to make any more signings before the start of the season? Yeah, no, I think you know that's what I would prefer. I think for I would, I'd certainly say for League Two and perhaps League One clubs where you know sometimes finances can still be quite tight. I think the the winders can force you to, to perhaps bring some players in that you're not really wanted and that's not really helpful for those players often. You, know, you might get them a, a paycheck so to speak and they've got a club but in terms of actually getting game time, so I think sometimes that can you know, force a club into a decision you don't really want to make and then a the player goes, expectations are getting more time than they, they get. But then it's stuck there, so I think it's a better from that point of view, certainly, and gives you a bit of a bit of breathing space um, that hopefully we can you well we may utilise uh, if we get exactly where we want to be. We might not have to do that. Obviously, as you say, you starting your pre-season friendlies this weekend. What are you looking for from your squad? I mean, I'm assuming the results aren't at the top of your priorities, but what are you looking for from your players? I think first and foremost, I guess it's a, a usual line that most managers will be sort of saying is it's about fitness, and it is a lot of it. it it's clearly that, but we certainly want to see. As I said, we have probably done more 11 v 11 work um, going into the first game than probably we've done in the past in general. I mean, some of that is kind of one because it's a new group of players and and trying to implement certain movement system um, 
and also we, we have got longer to prepare to get into the season so I think that's allowed us to not really cut back on, on just the running but we, they've certainly had a little bit more recovery time uh, it's allowed us to to run with the, the sort of Wednesday off uh, that we would normally do throughout the season as well um, and you know we, we just want to see those sort of understanding from the players of what's been asked of them you know we've done some analysis work um, you know Chris in particular has gone through clips with individuals or certain um, units of, of the team to try and get them to understand you know what's required some good bits some not so good bits and maybe some bits that just are not what we're after and um, I think from that point of view that's what we're keen to see because I think the fitness side will, will naturally come anyway. How have the new players fared so far for you? Good, I mean some, some are better than others at this moment in time and again I think with experience you learn to not get caught up on making too many judgments and you know ideas on players because you know, some are in better shape than others, some are naturally better athletes than others. Uh, Harry Clifton, for example, he, you know, he looks like he's at the wrong place because he can just run all day. He probably should be an athletics team. Um, some of the others have to work at that and, and some are more technical than others. So, you, you know, in general, you're just looking for their attitudes, their application to it. You know, a couple of th things already that I'm keeping an eye on in terms of people's approach, um, trying to guide them, get them fully to understand what you know myself and the staff want from players because it, it might sound silly and I sometimes listen to some stories and I find it strange that you know our environments can be very different uh, and demands placed on players but we obviously believe in the way that we work and it's seeing how players kind of cope with that and how they react and uh, so that's important but overall we've been pleased with with the players coming in we haven't certainly got anyone that's really struggled um, with, with what the the physical work that we've done whether that be you know pitch base whether that's simply running ta uh, sessions whether that's gym sessions and you know, hopefully they're getting into sort of a routine and understanding of, of how we work. Obviously, we all know about the improvements that have been going on here and at Blumble Park this summer. How have things gone so far? Good. Um, you know, I think it's the, the improvements up here have made a good impression with the players in particular that were here. And I know we've just spoke about having a lot of new bodies, but I think those sort of not stories, but the, the narratives passed on about how it was before, perhaps, and you know, even stood here in this room, you'll see an improvement. Um, so that's gone down really well, and I think that even the the new players, I think they've been pretty impressed with with you know what we've got. But I think more so just how they, they kind of looked after and treated, and and that's important. You know, we want players to, you know, when it comes to the time to leave here, from a certainly from a club point of view, we want them to go away with good thoughts. And you know, we, with all due respect to everything that we're trying to do, we're not suddenly become a, a Premier League club. But we want to be, you know, the best that we can be with what we've got available. And, and as Jason and Andrew have, have constantly said, it, when possible, we will keep improving. It's not a case. So we've done that. That's it now. And and think that's it. We all know this. I think. You know, almost endless improvements we can make. Um, you know, we've got to understand when the right times are to improve, um, and and what's realistic to to what we've got. But it's certainly a big improvement. You know, the, the pitchers, for example. I think we would have liked it still to be in that little bit better, if we're totally honest. Uh, but again, the timing of everything it was difficult to probably get that work done because of of when the takeover um, went through. If we're still here next season, I'm convinced that they'll be better again. And, and that's kind of what we, you know, what I'm sort of alluding to, that not everything is going to be perfect 
um, but we certainly striving to be better and that's what you know I really like about um, Jason and Andrew's vision and thought and it's always about trying to improve and, and that fits in perfectly with what I'd like to do, you know see from a football club. We know all about the new signings and the improvements made here. Have you made any additions to your bathroom staff at all? We've got a kit man, um, Ali, who we brought from, I got to know him from as rivals uh, in the time spent there. Uh, and again, just little things like that, you know, he already has had people without us prompting saying, you know, what a nice lad he is. And just, you know, it might not seem a big thing, but the players get all the kits laid out for him in the morning. Just little things that we want to try and make a difference, um, and you know that's you can, the cynics will be like, "Does that get you the three points on a Saturday?" Well, maybe it doesn't, but maybe all these little things might end up with us eventually signing a player that's to in a throw in between two clubs. So that's what we you know we're trying to do. We've also uh, Chloe and Masseuse that we. In, uh, brought in last season on a, on a sort of very part time basis is now with us uh, full time so we've also got he's not back from because um, he was away with England Ben Mortlock his position is linked to the youth team and, and first team but he will support Dave Moore uh, in the medical side of the football club again he's been away with England I think that shows what type of of lad he is, uh, so we we definitely um you know Cal last season, he's just done a presentation earlier about the platform that we're using to get the players clips up, um, all the games will go on there, there'll be some unit uh, work that goes on there as well. So we again we're trying to get as much professionalism um, into the club as possible, and again that might. It won't be for everyone, you know. Even the players said that. In terms, some players now just love the clips. Others still will be, um, you know, less inclined to look at that, and that's fine. You know, as long as when it's something that's on there, we've, you know, we've asked them all to look at. Some people like studying the game. Others not, not so much. Uh, but overall, it's just a, you know, some a few examples there of, of improvements again that's been made. You know, not to buildings, but in terms of people. Um, and trying to get, like I said, give ourselves the best chance possible, take as many excuses out of the equation as possible for, um, for the players um, and hopefully that can all lead to us having a good season. And just finally, obviously Mac has got his testimonial game next week, just a word on him and his impact at the club. Yeah, he's um, obviously had a fantastic impact, I don't think when I, I signed him here in my first full season uh, could have probably envisaged that I'd, maybe that I'm here <laughs> albeit through uh, some time away in between but also for, for James to still be here you know, he's been a fantastic servant and will continue to be and I think that's the bit that he's maybe conscious of still you know it's not like it's a testimonial that's it you know he wants to still do the best that he can and he wants to be number one and you know that's what the certainly thought process I want him to have uh, but won numerous uh, awards for the seasons, player of the season etc uh, throughout his time here. I think most people in the community know him, he lives local, his family have, have really settled here and you know he, he's got links with businesses in the area. He, you know, again, goes out and does a lot of the community work. Um, he's just a really good character. He keeps telling me how much he's matured, s slightly. Um, but I don't want him to lose all of that because, you know, that's another aspect to him. He has got a serious side, you know, he'll organise things, um, things like that, make sure players know what's going on. But there's also a daft side to him, which, again, light can lighten the mood, can bring a laugh to the dressing rooms, etc. And you know that's important as well. He's just a, a good character, you know, a good player, but more importantly for me, just a good character, good person and uh, when it comes round that game I'm sure he'll get a, a really good reception that'll be well deserved.